Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Teamer Talk. I'm your host Carl Gibbons and joining me today we've got Bill Dorman, uh, CEO and founder of My Shower Door. Um, if you live in Southwest Florida you've got to know Bill. Uh, but just to uh, give everybody a background that who are of our listeners and viewers that don't know Bill, locally owned and family operated business, seven locations, soon to be eight, um, all across uh, Southwest Florida. Um, Bill and his wife and, and, he, and his kids uh, do a phenomenal job. They're very well known. The accolades for their business and for their work just keep coming in. Just three weeks ago, My Shower Door was ranked by Inc. Magazine in their top 250 fastest growing uh, private companies in Florida. Last week, Business Observer ranked My Shower Door as the top 50 contractors in Southwest Florida and is also a finalist in this year's Distinguished Entrepreneur Award uh, at the SBDC. I could go on, but it would take a program all in itself. So, Bill, welcome to Team Talk. Carl, thanks for having me here. You're doing a great job, and uh, I'm honored to be part of this. It, it's, it's my pleasure, and we're just glad to, to, to have you. Now, um, we're inevitably going to get on to talking about coronavirus because it just it's, it's top of mind, and, and it's affecting businesses, not just in Southwest Florida, but across the globe. But before we get there... I gave people a little bit of a taste, but I know your story. Share with, with our, our viewers the, the My Shower Door story, because it's a great one. Boy, it has to go back early on. Uh, you know, prior to me even starting a business, I worked for a company. I went to college, and I was in electrical technology. Right. Um, then I put in burger alarm systems. Then I was the top salesman for the burger alarm company. At the same time, I grew up in sports. I uh, played soccer. My mother worked for Spalding Worldwide. She developed the top flight golf ball. She was a chemist. So it, it's amazing that what she's done. But I always grew up with a ball in my hand. Well, I became very good at ice hockey. Uh, I played on a junior team. Then I became a professional ice hockey referee. Uh, and it was during that time that I was traveling a lot that my oldest son, Keith, who was only 12, came down with Hodgkin's disease. And with me traveling all the time and, and working for somebody, it was very difficult for Donna to get Keith to treatments and take care of my youngest son, Doug. So together, we had to kind of decide how do we continue in business? We didn't have insurance for Keith. Uh, what were we going to do? So we decided to start our own business so I could work from home. So we started what we call a closet organizing business. Um, you're probably familiar with the product now, but in 1986, no one knew of this product. I called it refrigerator shelving uh, for closets, and it was what they called closet made, which is now a really big national brand. Yeah. But what was happening is I went to my attorney's office who did my taxes that year, and I was sitting in his office, and I saw a picture of this <clears throat> very different, different shelving, and I said, that's it. We can be a closet organizing company, and we can work out of our house. So I brought the magazine home and I showed my wife and I says, I figured it out. We can work from home. So this dare I say, Bill, this is when you came out the closet, right? Literally. <laughs> literally. Actually, it's where I went into the closet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we built a business out of the basement. Of course, up north, we had basements out of the basement of my house, selling and installing closet made shelving. And quickly, we became the largest closet-made dealer in Western Massachusetts. Now, I had never been in business before. And, you know, Carl, when you read a lot of stories about entrepreneurs, there's always something in their life that put them into a position where they had to make a decision what to do. And I was fortunate. And, and I say this, and Keith says it, cancer was probably the best thing that ever happened to us. Right. And, it, and it's terrible. But it forced us down a road where we can now make some money and pay for Keith's treatments. It always comes down to the need, doesn't it? Yes. When I, it yeah. doesn't matter who the successful entrepreneur I talk to, and as you know, I've, I've talked to many, there's, yeah. it always comes down to that. There was a need. They've either identified a need and they're solving that problem or something happened to them or their circumstances generated that need. And, yes. And that's what it was in your case. And, and it made us stronger. Right. And it made the family stronger. And the work ethic, I mean, we're now an entrepreneur. I had to quit the job. I stopped refereeing. And we were all focused on this closet shelving. Now, that was 1986. Um, 
And again, Home Depots weren't even in existence then. So I didn't have anybody to compete against. I was the new guy with a new product. Right. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I learned how to advertise, how to market, how to do bookkeeping, how to do it all. Right. Again, it was Donna and myself. So started off with some employees. They were part-time firefighters. They had a great schedule and I was paying them piecemeal to put this closet shelving in. Well, we rapidly became the largest distributor in Western Massachusetts and Northern Connecticut. Then the builders that I was doing work for came to me and say, hey, I can't get anybody to do shower doors. Are you interested in doing shower doors? I didn't know the first thing about them. So <clears throat> I happened to, while I was doing closet shelving, I was also wholesaling it to other companies that were interested in what I was doing. And I was buying so much of it, I was able to make some profit on the margin of what they could turn around and resell it for. Yeah. And I ran into another guy that was going to do the same thing with shower doors. And he said, you know, I know a guy in Connecticut that wants to start franchising. Maybe that'd be a good tie-in for you. So we met with each other and instead of franchising, we bought a license agreement. Right. And at the time, and people may remember this because when I moved to Naples in 2003, it was called Mr. Shower Door. Right. And to this day, Tom Whitaker, who owned Mr. Shower Door in Norwalk, who's still in business, and I are best friends. So uh, we started Mr. Shower Door in conjunction with our closet uh, company. And then we became a full service to builders. And we were doing toilet paper holders, paper towel uh, dispensers, medicine cabinets, numbers on mailboxes, all the things that builders did not want to put in right. when they built a home. And homeowners would come to us and they would come into our showroom and we would do mirrors, like I said, uh, medicine cabinets that goes on and on. So we did closet shelving. So I really uh, found a niche market there. Right. So uh, time went on and we got bigger. I opened a second store. We had the greater Hartford area and then uh, decided to sell the business. One winter day, Donna took a nasty fall fell on both wrists. She looked at me and says, that's it, we're moving to Florida. I said, really, we have a house, we got kids, we have a business, that's it, can't stand it anymore. So business on the market, we ended up selling the business, cashed out for a decent amount. I thought I was retired. Uh, Good luck with that, right? Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> we had bought a house in Bonita Springs. Yeah. Kids came down to visit and they said, why are we still in Massachusetts with snow and ice? We can have water. We could have our boat. We can play golf year round. We're coming. So they came down and we decided, look, we're not going to do closet shelving anymore, only shower doors. Right. And we continued with Mr. Shower Door. In 2003, we opened up our Naples showroom, followed in 2005 with Fort Myers. So we went from the three original family members, myself, Keith and Doug, and of course, my wife, Donna. And then, but Keith stayed back and helped the new owner up in Massachusetts transition for about seven months before he could come down. So really it was Doug, Donna and myself started at Wiggins Pass with our first Mr. Shower Door showroom. That was September of 2003. In 2005, we opened at Fort Myers next to Bonefish Grill, 2007 in Sarasota, and it continued. So right now we have seven stores throughout Florida, and then last year, we just finished building this facility that I'm uh, on the Skype with you. Uh, it's our newest manufacturing facility. We're up to 60,000 square feet. We've got six other affiliate stores, almost like a license agreement, right. where we sell our business model and distribute hardware to them across the country. There's locations in Oklahoma, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota. And now it's gone from you and the kids to how many employees? 110 as of yesterday. Good for you. Good for yeah, you. Congratulations. Maybe. <laughs> it's a, yeah, right. <laughs> but it, a, a great story, man. And uh, it, I don't care who's watching this. If that doesn't motivate you, then, then nothing will. Just get off this call right now. You shouldn't even be watching. Yeah. So, Bill, a gr great story. Um, let's get on to what's top and front of everybody's mind at the moment, the coronavirus. Um, yeah. What's your take from a business perspective? Uh, it, it's very, very concerning. And the reason it's concerning to me is I've got to look out for my employees. Yeah. I've got to look out for the business and I have to look out for our customers. Right. Uh, you know how this thing gets uh, transmitted. 
from people and some of them are silent. People may be transmitters and they don't even know it yet. Yep. I'm very concerned going into people's homes yep. as well as not only I should be concerned, but they should be concerned as well. Uh, so it's a really big, big issue that we're dealing with. And we are going to deal with it. Governor DeSantis started the stay at home order yesterday in Florida, and we're going to abide by it, even though we are considered an essential business. So I you're erring, on the, erring on the side of caution. Erring on Without the a doubt. Right. Without a doubt. I've got three employees that just had brand new babies. Right. I'm not going to have that on, my, on me because I'm still tracking a dollar. Right. Uh, we are going to err on the side of caution and we're going to shut it down. Now, right. critical management is going to take care of critical employees and we're going to do what we can to service the ones. But I'm going to say 90 of our employees are going to sit tight for 30 days. Right. Okay. And they're going to get paid and we're going to make sure they're all paid. Good for you. Good for you. How, what's your take on how Uncle Sam has addressed uh, this pandemic? Uh, I, Carl, one thing I found out in business, we got to keep politics out of it. I have yep. very strong feelings, but I'm not going to bring in politics. Right. But I will say that what I've seen so far, the government is doing as much as they can to help us. Um, one of the reasons we're going to get paid is because they've set up that SBA small business loan that we will take advantage of. And I think every other small business person needs to do that. Get in line. I'm hoping that they come through like they say they're going to, because the business owner has to front the money. Yep. We have to put the payroll out every week. Yeah. And we're just keeping our fingers crossed. They're going to come through and pay us back. It was back. ever the same, right? It was ever yeah. the same. It's always yep. us first, right? I, 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 I agree with your, your take, Bill. And um, I, I, I want to be fair and say um, that I think that Uncle Sam, politics aside, I think he has stepped up. Um, normally, as we all know, governments are, are, are reactive. That's what they do anyway. And it doesn't matter what colour you are. It doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you are. Governments are reactive. I think that they've reacted well. Um, and I think they've stepped up. And I think they are doing the right thing. And I think so, so a lot of the financial institutions as well. I think they're finally doing the right thing. I think banks have finally learned that they can put service back into customer service. Um, and so I, I, I'm happy. The one, thing concerns, the one thing that concerns me is how is the general public going to receive what we're doing? When they get that phone call later this afternoon and say, you know, the shower door that we schedule for next week, it's not happening. Right. We're not going to install it. I know there's going to be customers that are going to complain. Right. Uh, I well, know it. Th there are. And, um, uh, but I think, my take and my hope for you and it's been my experience so far with everybody else i've spoken to that 90 percent of people they get it they understand we're all in this together we're all in the same boat it's not like you're picking on mrs smith or you're picking on mrs jones you pulled her name out of the hat it's we're all in this together and and, and i think, I think a lot of, there. I don't, oh, there we are we're back i think i think a lot of people will understand it and uh, I, th I think that will, I think that will go with you. Um, but coming back to the sort of the entrepreneurial perspective, uh, okay. I, I, I always say, and I always will say, um, that it doesn't matter what the financial crisis is. If we look back in history, it's always been the small mid market businesses, the entrepreneurial ecosystem that's got us out of it. You know, we can't yeah. rely on Uncle Sam. We can't rely on big business. Even it's the mid. The small and mid-market businesses, 95% of, of which make up the economy of the United States, it's us guys that have to push it forward and make it happen. And the quicker we do that, and the quicker we get hold of it, the quicker this pandemic will, will be behind us. Because I think the medical people are, are, are working night and day. They're, they're, they're doing a tremendous job. But it's our job to keep the economy going. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not Uncle Sam's job to keep the economy going. And let me give you a, a let's give a shout out, because I don't know how many first responders or medical people are on this podcast, uh, but hats off to them. Yeah. They're doing unbelievable work. I wouldn't want to be in their position, but no. I admire every single thing they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And they're in one of those sort of damned if they do and damned if they don't, right? They can't yeah. get it there quick enough and they should have had it there before and all that stuff. But yes, I totally endorse all of that. Um, what's your advice to entrepreneurs during these challenging and uncertain times, Bill? 
what is it you what would you say to them well i i, I would say that uh you have to protect your employees your employees are your biggest asset your customers are your next biggest asset but you do have to protect the business all of the employees are looking for a leader they want someone to step in and give them direction and they'll take that direction as long as the message is clear what we are going to do what the plan is how their family is going to be taken care of so that's the one thing i will give out to all entrepreneurs now i'm sitting in a different position than most restaurant owners that are their hands are tied right now and i feel really really bad for them but there's many other lines of businesses out there that are just holding on for week to week and and they're in a different position than i'm in so i can't give advice to that they're going to have to do what they feel is right but they need to be creative in their marketing get a message out there but it's got to be a sympathetic message also yeah i think the the uh I, we're we're in a different time we're in a different we're in a different environment so we've got to not only think differently but we've got to act differently as well we can business is not as usual right business is not as usual everything's yep. changed so yep. we have to change with it we yes. have to we have to address it accordingly and sitting there going no i'm 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 just going to hunker down and i'll be there on the other side of this and i'm not saying we're not going to stand by our people because I, I believe that, that the vast majority of business owners will do that but you can't say now you know i'm just going to hunker down and we'll get through this and i'll see you on the other side no i think the whole game has changed now without a doubt without a doubt um it's funny we had a, a corporate meeting this morning to make the decision clear for our employees i'm going to be vid doing a video that'll put up on our website so when we are shut down people understand and they still have a comfort level that we'll be back and yes we've taken deposits for many doors to be installed and we have the obligation to put those doors in when the time is right and when it's safe for both parties but uh we had a decision this morning that we were ready to shut down and uh an order came in for a bunch of sneeze guards that we're able to make in our factory and it'll protect the customer and to us that's critical so they're going to work extra late tonight and get the order today and and manufacture that product and probably get them installed tomorrow before the shutdown right excellent excellent stuff so what do you think it's going to look like on the other side bill yeah. Well, I'm hoping for, and I can only guess, I don't have a crystal ball. I've got a lot of glass pieces that look like crystal. <laughs> However, I'm thinking that when people are confined to home, they're gonna be looking just like they did in the bad housing market where they're not buying new homes and they're staying in there. They're, they're gonna be looking to remodel and do some things around the house. I think our product is perfect for that. Change out that old shower door for a new shower door. Um, I think we're going to be really busy when we come out of this wow. and a lot of the new construction that we've got contracts for may be put on hold. Quite honestly, Carl, I think it's a big pause button put on the world. We're going right. to wake up in two weeks and pick up where we left off. Right. Do you have any concerns about the supply chain scenario? I'm getting a lot of feedback from people that are saying, look, you know, everything's shut down. You're right. Like, you're, there's going to be this pent up demand. Uh, there's going to be this pent-up frenzy, not just for the mere fact that everybody's been locked up inside for two weeks, three weeks, sure. but but then there's going to be this great tsunami again of demand, you know, and everybody's going to want their shower. Well, it doesn't matter what it is, but it'll be their shower door or whatever it is, even the right. ice cream. They're going to want it now, and yeah. because of the uh, because of the lockdown and because of the disruption uh, to um, to production. And it's not just your production, it's your vendor's production. It's the domino effect, right? It's all the way down Without the line. Sure. Um, so uh, do you, are you looking to your supply chain? Do you think that will uh, be affected? It will be affected. There's no doubt it will be. Uh, I was lucky that when we decided to start manufacturing glass here in our shop, I started pulling back a lot of things that I bought from Asia and Mexico. And most of my supply chain right now is in the United States. Right. Our float glass comes out of South Carolina, a big company called Pilkington, yeah. a great company, Laurenburg, okay. South Carolina. That's where the glass, the float glass is actually made and trucked here. Um, a lot of our metal extrusions are now made in, uh, in the United States where I used to get it offshore. Do you, do you think the, the face of business will change? In here. 
Do you think the face of business will change yes. in general? Not, not just my shower door, but the way we do business and the whole business environment. I'm going to predict it's going to change twice. Okay. I think for the short term, it's going to change to a lot of virtual like you and I are doing now. A lot of shopping will be done. But the people that really like to feel and touch and things, that's going to come back. That brick and mortar, it will come back. People are going to realize that the low cost, the cheap, isn't worth the low cost. Right. It's actually costing you more. Right. There's so many people just in my industry alone that have ordered plumbing supplies or shower doors and when they get it to their home they realize they're so cheaply made and that's why the cost was so little right. and people will pay for quality and when you're talking southwest Florida, most people that have been able to make a living to afford to live here they want quality they really do and they want service as in customer service right and that's the thing that online doesn't give them so i predict it going twice it's going to shift to virtual for a few years and it'll come back. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm predicting a big shift, especially in the service sector, um, <clears throat> to a lot more uh, home, uh, off, home office based scenarios. Yes. Because yes. we're going to have a whole bunch of people that are currently paying X amount of dollars a month rent for these offices, and their businesses are now being run from home. There's, there's obviously going to be the learning curve and there's the ups yep. and the downs and the scops and the skips and the jumps, right? But eventually they'll have all that ironed out and the CEOs around the country are going to be saying, hmm, I was writing a 10 grand, 50 grand a month check for this office building, for this office space, and I haven't used it for the last three months and we're still here and it's still going along nicely. So, hey, everybody, you're now used to working at home. The fear of that has gone. You've gone almost through an enforced learning curve. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're shutting the office space and we're all going to work remotely. I think, I think there's going to be a huge upturn in that. A huge Carl, upturn. You just hit on a big thing there. And that's what most entrepreneurs run across is the fear factor. Yeah. Once you get through that fear factor, you open up all sorts of opportunities. Opportunity, yeah. I had the fear factor when Keith had cancer. Yeah. I worked through it. Yeah. And that's how people do get judged. It's not that you get knocked down. It's how do you get up and how do you get stronger? Right, right. And the same thing's going to happen here. They were forced into something. You're going to figure out better ways of doing it. Right. And, and, and I would, I've been saying a lot that the fear is actually worse than the pandemic because it, it, you, can, you can catch it just as much. And it's yeah. equally as paralyzing and equally as uh, debilitating if you, if you yeah. let me get hold of you. But you yeah. let me get hold of you here and you don't. You know, we can, we can prevent this, you know, we can prevent I, this. I learned this in my golf game and it's called paralysis by analysis. analysis. Yeah. <laughs> it, and it's brilliant. And it works through not just golf, but in many applications. Right. Right. Overthink so, it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Bill, I want to, I want to shift gears a little bit and we can come away from coronavirus. And I'm going to th throw you a few curveballs, and let, let, right, let, let's, let, let's see how they do. Okay. What's the best piece of vi business advice you've ever been given? Treat people like you'd want to be treated. Okay. Without a doubt. All right. Okay. Biggest mistake you've made in business? Biggest mi misstep or mistake if you could go back and like, not going to do that one again. What's the, what's the big one? I know it for sure because I changed <laughs> when I came to Florida. Not putting enough money into advertising. Uh, getting your message out. You could have the best product in the world, but if nobody knows about it, what good is it? Right. But you got to be creative advertising. But I started advertising way too late. I could have started much, much sooner. Right. I, I, I think, uh, again, I know we said we were coming off the, cur the, the, the current coronavirus challenge, uh, but I think it's even more important now for business owners to be seen because if they're not seen now, they're going to be forgotten later. Yeah, you, no you've, got, you've got to keep your name out there. You, whatever you do, you've just got to be seen. All right. Where do you think biz new business owners, new entrepreneurs should focus most of their time? Oh, um, building structure, building, depending on what your business is. Um, I read a lot of business books and they talk about the three P's, you know, product, price, yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, focus on people. If you're growing your business, if you're going to scale that business, have a process in place, 
make sure you have a direction. So you have to have your five-year plan, three-year plan, one-year plan, and adjust as you go. But have that, that message out there for everybody, clear vision where you want to be. And that's the one thing. It, when I got into business and I didn't know any of that, I was all over the place. Right, right. So get focused. Good one, good one. Everybody has those moments of self-doubt, those moments of oh my God, what am I, what am I doing? Is this the right thing? Should I have stayed up North? <laughs> Should I have really built this huge production plant? Whatever. How do you build, deal with those moments of self-doubt? Um, talking, I've got a great staff, but I've got a great family. And one of the things that we knew that when we built this business is we always had the family, the four of us. And there isn't a job in this one of us can't do right and to us we can overcome just about anything i mean my son doug knows every machine out there intimately if they break down he can fix it so i'm not dependent on one person i have to have i think that's the biggest thing understand your business know it inside and out okay uh has there been a book or a movie or so that's had a huge impact on you and the success of your business? Uh, you know, and you don't have to say mine. I'll forgive you if you don't say mine. All right, I'll, we'll pass on that one because that's a little bit biased. <laughs> I've read everything from Art of the Deal yeah. through, um, boy, let me think. I watched every episode of Marcus Lemonis and The Prophet. Yeah. I've watched The Apprentice and I've learned from people trying to get jobs and I can see their mistakes or what I felt were mistakes. Those type of the founder i love the aviator uh which is you know uh, uh hughes was an eccentric but he, he knew what he wanted and he wasn't going to stop and i learned from walt and uh, walt disney and roy disney where one had the vision and one was the financial guy um and, and then i try and parallel that with our family and, and our vision so there's not one book that I would say, oh, you, you, you must read this. Right. No, I think it's a conglomeration of things. Right. And I, I agree with you totally. I, I say to people, uh, and I, I always this one as a bit of a joke. Actually, if you give me a book, you're, that's the fastest way to put me to sleep. If I, it's true. If yeah. By page two, I'm gone. But I listen to them all the while. I've got them on audio books all the while in the car. And you're right. It's not just the one. It's the combination of them all, right? Sure. It, it, they, they, they all add something. Well, Carl, I, I told you how I grew up in sports. Yeah. <clears throat> and I got to a pretty high level, in cl including professional. And along the way, I've played for coaches that I would never send my kid to. Yeah. I've played coaches that I wish I had my whole career. Yeah. And I've learned from them. And I've said to myself, I want that trait. And there's one over there I'll never have in my repertoire. Yeah. And then I become that blend of what I felt was good. And I use that in our leadership here. Right, right. So last one, before we call it a day, Bill, give me one thing that you attribute your success to. The, oh, family. The one, the one major thing. Family. Yeah. Because every time we've hit an obstacle, when we sat our family down, we were able to get through it. So the family is the one thing that really has kept us together. Excellent answer. Excellent. And I always say, when people ask me the same question, I always say it's Cheryl. Same thing, my wife. She, yeah. you know, it's always that, always there, always that rock, right? So, Bill, if, any, if anybody... A lot of people right? don't know my wife, Donna, but she, they don't realize that she is the driving force here. Right. She yeah. it all happen. Yeah, right. So, Bill, if people want to uh, contact you or check you out, how do they get hold of you? Where can they go to find you? If I didn't tell you, you'd probably guess but it's bill at myshowerdoor.com. You can always get me by email. Um, I'm usually at our manufacturing plant. That's 239-689-8402, extension 102. You can call me. But the best is bill at myshowerdoor.com, and I'm really good at returning that. You can look at us on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, YouTube channel, we're going to start our podcast as well. I'll probably have you on as a guest on our podcast as well. Thank you. I'd be delighted. I'd be delighted. Bill, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I know time is always uh, the most valuable asset uh, one, 
that we have uh, and now more than ever so i appreciate you taking the time to talk to us um i i wish all the best for you and all your staff and your family stay safe and uh, look after yourself and to everybody out there that's uh, looking watching and listening same to you until the next time until the next edition of team of talk this is carl gibbons wishing you all safe please stay safe stay at home don't be stupid and let's all get through this and we'll see you on the other side and with that, we're out.